for uh, thank you so much for being here. This is the uh, fifth uh, session uh, of this current series, uh, and then next week will be our final session. Uh, it's been great having you um, all here, those who've been able to uh, attend and participate in the program um, and also complete their assignments. I uh, really appreciate those who've been putting, we have a, a couple of participants that have done everything. It's just amazing. And that's the best reward um, that we can ask for um, is when participants uh, come in either uh, through the live sessions um, or uh, watch the videos if they cannot make it and a complete assignments because that is really uh, the most important part of the program is completing the assignments because it brings us uh, it brings us uh, it, it opens up it uh, brings out a lot of things that maybe we haven't thought about that we haven't thought about it in a in a particular way so we're hoping that this program is being beneficial to you and then you will be uh, using the information, the new knowledge that we're all gaining together uh, to help your communities. That's what our hope is. Um, oh, Christian's oh. traveling tonight. Okay, yes, yeah. Christian did tell me that he's going back to, I think he's going back to Uganda, if I'm not mistaken, so he's not going to be here. Uh, but it, it's okay. We'll, we'll continue on. Uh, we'll continue on. But Christian, thank you so much for being here. You are a champion. I was just looking at your yes. assignments. It's great. It's thank you so much for um, uh, doing uh, doing all this stuff. Uh, all right. So uh, let's start with. Uh, uh, so today we have we're going to be talking about our first lesson is about generosity and selflessness. Uh, this is something that we do uh, with all age groups. Uh, Imani is going to do um, this uh, lesson for us. And then the second hour, I will be doing the uh, retirement and investing. That's what I'm going to be doing. So, Imani, I'm going to share Stuff. my screen, and then it's all yours. Okay. So, uh, today we are working on our generosity, which I know we've talked about sometimes, um, you know, we can, it can be a little difficult. So, what, why should we be generous? Can we put that in there? And I'm going to read about what generosity is actually. But why why would generosity be important? Should we be generous? Either you can say it or write it. Yeah, since we're a small group, please feel free to open your Yeah, just on. yeah, you can just pop on. Yeah. Before we yes. start start calling you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we should be generous, of course, but why? 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 Why should we be generous? Patricia, you can open your microphone if you can. Yeah, totally fine. Um, I think I don't like being generous is like helping people and it makes you feel happy. That's, That's why a good I think reason. I should be generous. It feels good, right? Okay, so I'm going to read uh, right on our um, our workbook. So it says, if man be imbued with all good qualities, but be selfish, all the other virtues will fade or pass, and eventually he will grow worse. And I think we all kind of know someone like that. They pretty much have everything together, but they're very selfish or very self-centered. They're only really concerned with themselves. And all of the good things, the talents that they have kind of goes out the window because we just kind of see them as a person that you really can't get close to. You really aren't going to have a, um, you already know they're not even considering you. Um, so that's kind of um, what that means. My computer is messed up. I can't read yours. I lost generosity. How did that happen? It literally disappeared. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can read this. It says, generosity is giving and sharing, of course. Um, you share freely, not with the idea of receiving something in return. You find ways to give others happiness. And you give simply because it is a joy to give to others, just like Lucretia said. Um, generosity is one of the best ways to show love and friendship to everyone you know. Excellent. And I think we also know um, someone that 
if they give you something, you know that you're going to have to owe them something right after, you know? And so that's really kind of like, oh, no, thank you. I would rather just not have it because if I get it from you, I'm going to owe you. And that's not a good feeling, especially, you know, if you're giving something to someone and expecting it back, that's, that's kind of like you're putting yourself through a stress that's not necessary to necessary because sometimes when people need things if they have less how are they going to get enough for themselves and then be able to pay you back so um i stay away from that so if if i give anything there it is it's yours i'm not going to worry about it if so happens you give it back wow that's great you know i um most of the time i don't expect it just so that my heart is okay (laughs) that i still have a, a a a healthy relationship with the person that I might share with. So um, usually in class, we do um, an activity where um, going across the bridge, as you see in activity one, and um, what we do, it's a very, it's just a very skinny line and we have to get to the other side. And how do you get to the other side? The only way you can is if you work together. You can't selfishly just bogart your way because then the other one either falls off the line so you have to both of you have to stay on the line and both get across so it takes teamwork and effort and being generous because you have to allow the other person to get by while you're trying to get by and it's it's like a dance and so um we that's a fun way we express about being generous and some have an easy time and creative way of giving across and then some kind of struggle because they kind of always want to be the first one to get by so uh here is our first question what can i do to bring joy and happiness to others so even though just like lucretia said when we give it brings us joy but what can we do uh, to bring joy to others can I get some examples, please? Yeah. Um, I think that we can bring give joy to or bring happiness to people by um, giving them what they lack sometimes. Often. So for instance, I'm um, going to a place and then they, they don't have clothes or their clothes are torn and everything. You can just like give them close to you and they'll be happy. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. When my grandmother um, used to travel um, to Jamaica, that was one of her favorite vacation spots. She packed so much stuff to take to them. And it was just clothes. Um, she would go through, the, uh, it, would, it would be summertime or um, she would go another time, but I would be there in the summer. She would take my clothes that I couldn't fit anymore and pack them up. And, and I'm thinking, well, why are you giving them my old clothes? Like, you know, they're not going to like that. She's like, oh yes, they're going to really enjoy these clothes because, you know, I just grew out of them. They weren't old. And she would take soap and all of this. And it basically had a full suitcase um, that she was going to leave there. And then of course she would bring back goodies for herself in the, in the same bag. But, um, that was definitely something, um, that I learned about giving was my grandmother. She would give a lot all the time. Um, let, let's can see you think can, of it? Yes. Let's see if we can engage Ashish. I know it's, uh, midnight in India where his darling is from. So I, yeah, I was thank trying- you so, so much for being here. Uh, Ashish, do you have uh, any, anything to add in here? What we can do to bring joy and happiness to others? I don't know, he might he might just be listening. Uh, Imani, Hi, you, this is... Imani, you went mute. Sorry. Hi, this is Pooja, Ashish's wife. He's stuck in uh, some work. So I am the one who is attending on his behalf. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. I didn't realize that. All right. No problem. Thank you. So I guess that was that was his wife. All right. Okay. Then then I guess the only participant we have is Lucretia. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Okay. So um, here's the next question. What are the locations or organizations? Oh, no, this is a good one. Um, what are the locations or organizations where I can help others? 
So, Lucretia, where what what organizations can you think of um, that supports your community? Like, um, like in like various um, organizations, like NGOs and civil societies. Mm. And what do they do? Yeah. Okay, so it depends. So for instance, there's some like um they they can educate people like what you're doing on financial mm -hmm. and how to like, save their money. And then the others that like donate um clothes, food to like orphans and orphanage homes. And then there are those that um and bring money together to able to maybe contract um something for the community. So the community is lacking. Um, aspect, um, um, access to quite good quality water, then they actually like help them contract maybe like a pipe or like a, a boho or something that will be able to get, they can get like um, access to good drinking water. And the, or um, maybe they are lacking like a school building or something, then they can get bring funds in and do that. So it's kind of Very good. So here we have, we have the Red Cross, that works all over no. the world if there's an emergency. Mike? No. Hello? I turned it off. Okay, did anyone else have an example? Uh-oh, my camera's off too, my goodness. Okay. So we have something like the Red Cross, we have, um, I can't even think. We have so many. Um, Goodwill, we have, um, which Goodwill is like this, um, we give Goodwill free clothes. They sell the clothes uh, to the community, secondhand um, clothes and, and anything, housing, appliances. And then they take that money and um, sometimes they house people, some people that, may have um, gone through different programs, um, may have been um, incarcerated or in a, in a drug program, and they're getting their life back on track and Goodwill will, will house them, uh, get them job ready, and even, um, even working in the Goodwill, working in the actual store, and then getting them to um, get other jobs and, and, and housing and different things like that. So, um, we have a lot of different organizations that um, I like to support because definitely they help my own community. So I definitely like that. So I, uh, I, I like to add something in here. Uh, of course. So, something that I have noticed, uh, particularly for the past two years since uh, COVID mm -hmm. started, uh, especially with friends outside of the United States. Yes, as Imani says, we have a lot of organizations, NGOs in um, U.S. that are doing stuff, but what I've noticed is that friends, in particular Africa and India, uh, every individual feels responsible for doing something. Um, almost everyone who has come to in contact with our program, they always think about it. This is something that I need for myself. I want to learn how to be financially savvy for myself or my family, but then they're also thinking about how are they going to bring it into their community? Uh, mm -hmm. This has been that passion and that desire has been very interesting for me um, to learn. Um, and that's one of the other uh, gratifications that I at least get for doing these programs at no cost for friends around the world is because we know that there are other people uh, that are thinking of how to do this for the community. Of course, it's not that easy. Uh, as you're seeing, the material is very easy. There's no not difficult in there. But gathering people, gathering whether it's young children or teenagers or adults to participate in the program like this, that has been the uh, biggest challenge. And as you can see it even in our group, uh, we had when we started this program uh, four weeks ago, I had commitment from 10 people. I did ask specifically, uh, do we have your commitment? Uh, but it seems like um, other things have happened. Some have, uh, a few have really held up their commitment and have been coming every week. But then some of the other ones really didn't follow through either. But, uh, again, uh, really, uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, 
to be generous. And I really appreciate that passion and desire from the friends uh, outside of the US. Very good. Now, here is the other question. And um, obviously I will give this right to Lucretia. What can others do to bring joy and happiness to you? Uh, we, we've uh, changed the question, Imani. So it says, "What can I do?" Oh shoot, I, I'm I'm over here. <laughs> yeah, you're you're you're. you're and I was like, "Didn't you just tell me?" I was like, "Well, where's the question?" <laughs> okay. Yeah, so so we revised the question. It says, "What My can apologies. I do to bring?" My apologies. Here I go. So so Lucretia, which this is good for. This is almost like you know how 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 we are now thinking of mindfulness and self care and different things like that because a lot of times we put ourselves last on the list. So the question is, what can I do to bring joy and happiness to myself now or in the future? Um, that's a very tough one because exactly what I was to say, um, helping others is like bring joy to myself. Yeah, I, I really like it when um, someone is in is in need or is like needs help with something, and then I can be able to like help the person. I don't know. I feel this this joy. I can't explain, but I really feel happy about that. You don't so have to explain that. it. We and all then it. taking a vacation. Oh, good one. That's a good one. And vacations always <laughs> last on my yeah. list. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get real personal. So where where yeah. is the vacation you'd like to go? What what dream vacation would you like to give to yourself? Um, French Polynesian Islands. That's what I want to go to. Wait, I didn't hear you. Sorry. The French Polynesian Islands. Mm, French see? Polynesian Islands. French Polynesian. Sounds <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very yeah. good. I, I think our, our dream vacations are always somewhere far. It doesn't matter whether we live here, we want to go to the other side, and then there are friends that live in Africa or Asia or Europe, they want to come to this side. So yes, uh, I, I think it's nature of uh, our desires to travel and vacation. Yes. Uh, my niece just got married, and she went to Fiji, and she stayed in the little hut on the beach. And I was just like, wow, that is major. You know, it's like, I've only seen that on television or in magazines. <laughs> and she actually did it. So I'm, I'm very proud of um, the young folks. <laughs> uh, they, you know, get their careers and, um, and they figure out what brings them joy early on. And I think that's very important. And um, and then I, I feel the only missing piece is what Alex is gonna bring and that's investing in yourself. I think that's the only missing piece, but I feel the young folks, uh, my daughter loves to travel. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's really good because I'm not from that generation. I feel almost selfish if I you know, take some fancy vacation, you know, that's um, something I don't do often. I always try to put work with it. I took a 10-day a, a cruise and uh, I had the excuse because I was um, the, the um, stylist for the bride. So I got this big trip, but I felt that I could brag about it because I was actually working. It wasn't just a luxury trip. So I'm, I'm really proud of the young folks that really understand how to make them happy. It's very, very important. Okay. So now if you look on to the, um, our third activity, something else we do in the classroom, we actually have an election uh, for the class. And it's not like any election that we as adults know. It is not based on any propaganda. You can't promise them, I'll, I'll bring cookies or a pizza party. It's really based on the students choosing the students that have these characters of moderation, responsibility, accountability, thankful, and that really uh, share these characters in their day-to-day -day life and they express them with the other students. And it's, I, I that's one of, I, I love this whole program, but that's one I really enjoy watching the kids um, cho choose uh, their student to represent them, represent them um, 
for hosting all of these qualities. So it's really, um, really fun. And then sometimes the kids are really uh, surprised. You know, sometimes it's a real shy student that um, that everyone chooses because they have all these, they may be shy, but they still host all these wonderful qualities of being generous and respectful and all of that. So um, it, we have had times where um, kids try to promise to, to vote for someone else and it doesn't work out well in their favor. Then it turns into looking like our elections, but, um, but that's a really fun way of, um, of kids that actually, you know, looking at others and seeing the values in others and their character and how they carry themselves. So that's definitely um, something that I enjoy doing. So Alex, that was kind of quick. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what happens when we have only one participating <laughs> participant. But that's okay, the, the video is getting recorded and others will uh, be able to. Uh, oh, Mills is here too. I just, I just noticed Mills is uh, there too. Uh, welcome Nils. Mills, great having you. Um, all right, so uh, with that, um, uh, there's just one additional thing about the election process as Imani was mentioning. Uh, when we do the program uh, for young students, like in grade um, three to six or so, uh, because we do them in schools, uh, usually uh, we partner up with one school, we pick one or sometimes two grade levels, uh, like one year apart. And then uh, we present the basic level um, of our ABCs of wealth basic level. So most of everything that uh, we've been presenting in this program up to now um, over a three months period. So once a week we go to the classroom, we present uh, one of the lesson plans. It was the human treasures, patience, moderation, all of that stuff. Um, and then the final session is an assembly where we I uh, normally invite uh, parents and community members to come so students can do a presentation about what they have learned, what they like, what they have learned, and so forth. Um, and this is where uh, we do the election process. As Imani mentioned, every classroom elects two representatives to that process, and then they do the presentation. Uh, if you haven't watched, uh, we do, we have posted recordings. I'm going to show you how where to find it. Um, so if you go to our website, uh, there's a link. Um, they're all uh, YouTube videos, that first video. Uh, but there's a link in here, student presentations. So if you uh, go to our YouTube channel, uh, not only you can see the recorded of these sessions, uh, but they're also um, recording of the students. These are the students. And it's very uh, empowering what, uh, Often, I remember when we started the program, people would be kind of wondering, how are you going to teach finances to maybe a second grader or a third grader? Uh, but uh, when you watch these videos, it's so clear that they understand it. They learn it. Sometimes they learn and understand it a lot quicker than us adults. They get it a lot faster. And we've also noticed that uh, they have been a great way of um, transferring this education to their parents, um, to adults. Um, so if you remember, I'm gonna open up, um, this is the advanced level. Uh, our basic level, if you're thinking of um, doing this program in your community um, for any age group, uh, every lesson that we do has a handout. One of them. So like, for example, human treasures, once we do the lesson plan, then there is this handout that we ask the students to take it home to their parents. Uh, it tells the parents uh, what we did in class together and then give them specific suggestions on how to continue this education with their children at home. Uh, because as you're seeing, financial education is not something that we learn in like one or two hour class or even a 10 hour class. Uh, we are just presenting the material but these are uh, skills and habits that needs to be developed over time. Um, so these handouts are very um, uh, effective. Uh, we ask the students to bring these handouts back after they read it with their parents, grandparents, older siblings, uh, to bring them back with comments from the parents. And uh, we always enjoy 
uh, reading those comments, it shows that the um, knowledge is being transferred to the parents. Uh, parents often write, yes, you're already doing this, or they say, oh, this is a great idea. We're going to implement this. Like the first one, we encourage the parents to start giving allowance uh, in the either form of money, points, stickers, or something. It doesn't always have to be money. Um, and then the, like in the second one, after patients, once uh, we set goals, uh, we encourage the parents to begin to take their children uh, to financial institutions, to the banks, um, so they can save their money not only at home, but also uh, inside the bank. So uh, this is why uh, we uh, also ask the parents to come back, to come into the school um, and share their thoughts with us uh, of what they have uh, seen the changes that they have seen in their children uh, by, doing, by participating in this program. Um, all right, so uh, this, this was the election process. All right, we want to take this. So this question that we have, what can I do to bring joy and happiness to myself now or in the future? And as, uh, or maybe we can ask Mills since he just joined in. Uh, Mills, would you like to uh, share something? I know you did this exercise in your worksheet. Would you like to tell us what brings, uh, what can you do to bring joy and happiness to yourself? If you're able to unmute yourself. Okay, I think might not be able to do that. I can, I can share his responses. Uh, there are no secrets, so I will share his workbook. Because uh, he had a lot of good stuff to open this. Uh, so this is, I guess, uh, Nils is a musician. Uh, he plays the flute uh, uh, for bringing joy and happiness to others. Uh, spending time with friends and family, helping others. Um, he also listed college or school, church, uh, youth club, hostels where um, he can help others. Um, and then uh, also he likes to listen to music, uh, playing keyboard and, and playing games. Um, so these are um, great uh, thoughts that, that we put in here. Uh, where we want to take this, well, actually before we do that, I want to go back to last week's lesson because I saw um, something that were uh, very common, uh, both Lucretia and Mills that did this exercise of what we waste. Um, I thought uh, us Americans were the only people that wasted food, uh, but it seems like it's a universal problem because both Lucretia and uh, Mills wrote in there that uh, all three of them actually, uh, leaving the appliances on standby, not turning things off, uh, leaving tabs on, um, uh, improper storage. Lucretia wrote uh, that uh, people cook too much and then when they cannot consume it, they throw it, they throw it away. Uh, so we have a huge responsibility to fix these um, because as we are seeing, uh, I'm not sure if this is being felt in Africa or not, uh, but we are starting to feel shortage of some food items, some food supplies. Um, Lucretia or Mills, are you guys seeing some uh, issues with food, um, food supplies? Okay, um, I think there are just a few products that are expected to be. Job. I think um, in in is Africa, that is African countries that are currently experiencing food. I think wheat. Yeah, I think one of them is. Okay, yeah, wheat that comes from, I guess, from Russia and from um, Ukraine that has stopped. So uh, hopefully people will learn uh, not to wait for challenges and calamities like this before they start changing their ways. And, and something that uh, it always breaks my heart is when we go to schools, uh, either during some of the schools provide breakfast in the morning. If you have an early class, we would see that. Or sometimes when we are like leaving the, or getting into the school and the students are either starting or finishing their lunch. Ivani, you want to share what we see in schools happening with food? Um, 
Well, two things. Um, even if the child doesn't want it, they have to give them the full breakfast. So that's the first worst part is that they're giving the children even things that they don't even want. And then, of course, the child doesn't want it. So where is it going to end up? Right in the trash. And I mean, the the trash is full of food. And, you know, I, I complained so much about it. And it's so funny that now they have seemed to find a solution because after we have gone through this and knowing that, you know, that there are um, many families that don't have the food that they now allow the food to get picked up by another organization to redistribute the food. But before, um, just concerned about their liability, they would just throw away all the food after school, after breakfast. I'm mean, in it's 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 horrible. I mean, throwing away oranges and fruit. I mean, it's just it's really bad. But I think we actually have a law now um, about not wasting food and redistributing the food. It just has to be, um, definitely be cared for, you know, as far as the organization has to prove that they have proper storage, you know, keeping things cool when it's supposed to be cool and uh, making sure that it's distributed in a, a particular amount of time. But I think that could have been definitely thought of years ago from all of the waste that we have tolerated. It's really, really bad. And I just think, you know, students go to school to learn and they're really learning a really bad habit of wasting food. And, it, and even sometimes if the children are really watched over, they can't even give it to another student because then they're worried about um, this obesity uh, uh, epidemic that you can't even share the food. And it's, I just think it's, it's really teaching a very bad characteristic instead of a good one. So um, I'm glad that's out the way. And I, and I hope it's still um, being continued, even though we're, we're out here back in the classroom. So uh, yeah, I, I feel the same way that our students, our, our children are going to school to learn how to be wasteful, to be uh, most generous uh, to the rubbish can. Uh, it's like just grab and throw away. Um, or in, in the morning, I, I, every time we went to classes in the morning and they would have breakfast, the teacher was like within 10 minutes would be rushing the kids. It's like, okay, we are, we are done. We are done with breakfast, <laughs> throw away whatever you haven't eaten and then we're gonna continue. Um, so, uh, and, and one of the things, it's, it's great that government is putting some uh, legislation in there, uh, but through our program, we are hoping to uh, get everyone to develop the habit of being self-conscious. And just because things are available, we should not grab them. We should not take them. Um, this is unfortunately something that I think humanity throughout the world has become so accustomed to. If it's something as is our fingertip and it's available to us, whether we pay for it or not, whether we need it or not, we just have developed this habit of grabbing it. And then later on, well, I don't need it. Um, it it's like, being mindful, being respectful of everything, especially when we don't, uh, or let's put it this way, sometimes when we don't pay for things, we say, oh, it's my right to just grab and uh, drink. I, I see this so often uh, when there's a meeting or something and they provide a uh, bottle water. And it, it just breaks my heart because people grab the bottle water, drink half of it, and then leave the bottle half full on the table or in the park or something, and then it ends up in the trash. Again, we have become so generous to the rubbish thing that we need to um, really make some changes in there. All right, so let's see if you're not supposed to be uh, generous to rubbish bin, where are we supposed to be um, generous to? Um, and I'm gonna go back to, uh, let's see, that one, uh, this one. So if you remember, uh, we started with this table that we talked about investing um, in our future. Um, and this was an example as we talked about our financial affairs does not necessarily start at age three, right, at grade three or grade 12, or when we go 
leave the house and go to college or something. Our financial education and affairs really started when we were conceived in the mother's womb because uh, the system that God has created is such a perfect system that he gives us example. It's like for nine months, the mother provides for the fetus. Um, so the fetus just concentrates on developing the limbs that is needed for life on earth. That's all that happens in there. Um, and we need to take uh, that as an example and say, all right, how do I align my personal life on earth uh, to follow that same example? Because we are told, and again, we're respective of everyone's uh, spiritual belief and those that don't have a spiritual belief, we are not imposing any. Uh, but those that have a spiritual belief, all of us do believe that there is life after this earth. Um, our spirit, our soul continues to live and we need to uh, be able to be prepared for the next world. We need to develop our treasures. We need to develop our character traits. And in, and Oh, sorry, go ahead, Iman. I just want to say, scientifically speaking, um, when the baby is in the mother's womb, the third trimester, their subconscious is fully developed. Mm -hmm. So every when they're born, they might not know why they... Um, react to a certain voice or or cry when certain things happen or whatever but their subconscious has taken all that in and um when i i always you know read out loud to my children and and definitely made sure my environment was safe and um and and healthy in order um because i'm knowing all of that is going into me and the, the literally the subconscious um of my child so um i just think we you know people don't really i i mean i just know a lot of people think that because they're babies they don't know well they actually know before they're even born so very precious <laughs> exactly uh thank you for that so uh, in this world, we need to concentrate on developing our character traits, uh, being service to humanity, leaving a legacy behind. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that our life necessities are provided for, even though that clearly, as we read in the scriptures, God has said, I created you and I will provide. But that means that we also need to do our part. And that is done through active and passive income. And that's what we're going to concentrate in this hour. What is an active or passive income? How do we start it? How do we generate it? What, what do we do with it? Um, so I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, uh, if anybody would like to open their mic, Lucretia, you seem like you're the only one who's speaking today. So what is, uh, and uh, Mills, if you want, we can uh, either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. What is an active income? Lucretia, what do you think? I can hear the crickets, but nobody else. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucretia. Uh, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. I lost my I'm having some internet connections. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. What is active income? Um, I I think like you are working. They're doing something to earn something. That's what I think active income means. Okay. All right. Okay. And and, and what is the difference? So what is a passive income then? So passive income is like you are not doing a, how do I say, you are not doing anything physical or something. It's just like the money is working for you. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, exactly. Kind of like that. Yep, yep, perfect. That's, that's exactly uh, what the answer. It is. Yep. So I'm gonna go into our advanced level material. And if you want to read this uh, on your own, because there's a lot of information, the way you get to the uh, advanced material uh, uh, from the table of content on your worksheet, uh, you can click on this and it will open up the advanced material. So this is where we are. Uh, there is a There are several uh, lessons in here uh, that we're going to cover. So this one, the first one is about earning wealth. Um, it's, uh, it's our duty, it's our responsibility 
Uh, and as this one quote says, this is from the Baha'i writing, it says that we have to, it's like our spiritual responsibility to be earning wealth uh, and not feeling bad about it. Um, I, I know there are some thoughts, not so much lately, but uh, people used to think that money is bad, uh, even though that uh, it, it, is, it is a necessity, but it's when we get attached to money or our full uh, daily concentration becomes money. That's what it gets us into trouble. Uh, but um, looking at this, uh, we've actually put in three different types of earning. Uh, active income, as Lucretia said, it means that we have to physically do something. We have to either get up in the morning, uh, go to work, or since pandemic, a lot of us can work from home, but we have to physically be present uh, to do some, uh, to do uh, to do the work. And uh, active income can come from employment, whether we are employed by a company or somebody else. Uh, we can be our own boss, uh, be self-employed. If let's say we are a, for example, if you are a plumber or a carpenter, we could be just our, myself uh, doing the work. Uh, then some people expand their uh, business. Uh, they may hire other people to help them work, and that is what's known as the business ownership. Um, so these are the active uh, incomes. Uh, we'll come back to the entrepreneurship. Uh, then we have the passive income. And as Lucretia said, passive income means that our money is working for us. And it's not necessarily just money. It's income that we earn from, let's say, if we wrote a song, a piece of music, uh, a poem, uh, if we uh, painted a drawing uh, that people are interested in uh, purchasing and it can be replicated over and over again. Uh, if we have invented something um, that we can sell, an idea that we can sell to someone who can put that invention into an actual service or product, and then we continue to get royalty for it. Um, so those are passive income. Sometimes when we do put money in a bank, we could get a little bit like interest, but uh, usually interest is not that much. It's not something that we can uh, live on. Um, and then this is my definition, generosity income. As we were talking about it, we don't give uh, to receive back, but everywhere we read in all the sacred writings, it always says that we get ten folds back. We get multiple folds back. Um, so I like to put that in there. Uh, that that we should consider that as a sort of income um, too. And it's not necessarily always money. It could be a lot of different things. We get help from people. If we help someone, they're going to help us back, which could uh, affect us in our monetary aspects of life. So we could definitely uh, be part of that. Uh, Ronnie, anything you'd like to add on these different? Yes, I wanted to know. Um, have you? We haven't discussed about the meaning of money fat. No. And and I've learned that um, a lot of older people are money fat, mm -hmm. where they put themselves in financial disarray because they want to hold on to their money. And they will almost lose everything and they'll have a bank full of money. And I just, I don't get it, but it's, I didn't, I remember when I first started literally 12 years ago, when I started, I could not imagine a money fat person. <laughs> I thought it was just a simple little selfish person, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it goes beyond that, where it actually works against them to hold on to their money. Yep. Well, I just, I just wanted to say that there, it can really destroy you by being selfish. So the so money uh, is like, uh, we have another, uh, I used to have a, a slide um, somewhere else that kind of defined uh, different types of wealth. And, and the reason we put wealth in here and not earning money, uh, because our, our our vision of wealth is not only in the form of money. We look at wealth in uh, time, energy, uh, knowledge, uh, experience, our creativity, our talent, 
and then even into physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual powers. Those are all different types of wealth that we consider. We'll actually be talking about it next week as, our, uh, as part of the last session. So that's why our program is called ABCs of Wealth, and we continuously refer to it as well. And as Imani was saying, that we can uh, acquire and just hoard all different types of wealth. We can get a lot of knowledge, but don't do anything with it. We can acquire a lot of money and just keep on putting it into a bank and not do anything with it. Um, so our definition of wealth is that wealth is a form of energy. And if uh, anybody remembers from college or school years, energy is something that cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. It just changes form from one form to another. So that's what our idea of wealth is. Yes. Right. So let's continue on the passive income. We um, talked about it a little bit. Um, uh, there are different types that we uh, put in here. We're going to concentrate on investments a little bit. Uh, um, the generosity income, uh, money donations, uh, philanthropy. So let's go back to this one, uh, this one, entrepreneurship. Uh, Lucretia, what do you know about entrepreneurship? I think entrepreneurship is like um, turning an idea into a business. That's what I think too. Okay, is this an, <laughs> is this an existing idea, new idea, what? I mean, there are a lot of people have different ideas. Can you give an example, please? Okay, so um, for instance, uh, okay. okay, so um, you find that um, people are able to, I mean, your community, they are able to maybe buy things like from other people. So you could um, set up um, a system that will facilitate both traders and then and buy it so that it can be able to like um, buy or, or sell. Or um let's say you, maybe where you are there's no people do um they put money into that something called susu box here like just a small box that you place money inside and then at the end of the day people break it and then they spend it so you can set up like a bank or a financial um system so that it can be able to like accumulate their money there and probably maybe they have they want loans in the future they can come for it or something okay all right very good yeah uh, so entrepreneurship is, uh, like you said, it's a process of developing any enterprise or venture for a new concept that has never been tried before. It, it's something new. It has risks involved with it. Entrepreneurs, one of their characteristics is that they're courageous. Uh, they are willing to take calculated risks and they are okay with losing the resources that they put into their ideas. So let's look at it this way. If someone decides to be a plumber, uh, it's, it's a very worthy uh, job to do. It's definitely needed. Uh, but starting a new business doing plumbing, that cannot, that is not considered as entrepreneurship. That's just a business ownership or self-employment. Self-employment. Yeah, self-employment. But if that person comes up with a new way of doing any part of the plumbing, that he can uh, either patent or say, oh, this is I'm not, this has never been done before. I don't know if people are going to like it or not. Then it becomes an entrepreneurship. Um, entrepreneurs have certain criteria, certain characteristics that they're born with. Uh, I don't think, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Imani, I don't think certain things can be uh, uh, taught to people to be entrepreneurs. Um, Bravery so, can't be taught. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so th this is why I always often have uh, trouble with when there are a lot of initiatives or organizations that talk about, well, we need more entrepreneurs. We need to teach how to be entrepreneurs and, and uh, this stuff. It's like, uh, well, yes, but people have to have. So these are some of the things that they have to be born with. Visionary and good instincts have to have passion, energy and excitement, persistence, and drive fearless and take calculated risks. Now, some of these maybe might be able to, they might be able to teach them, but most of them you have to be born with it. Um, and then there are traits that they can acquire. Um, right. High intellect, good communicator, being a listener, being a salesperson and so forth. So that is the entrepreneurship uh, process. Indeed. 
Now, let's look at another one uh, uh, that we have in here under generosity income, philanthropy. Uh, Lucretia, what is your thought? What, what does it mean to be uh, philanthropic? Um, giving, helping people or giving to people, or like trying to like help, um, like maybe solve key problems for people without expressing anything in return. Okay. All right. Very good. Yes. Philanthropy is something that it's definitely encouraged. We need a lot of it because there's so many challenges in there, in, in the society. So what, and then it's also known as social entrepreneurship. A lot of, uh, entrepreneurs that, um, start a uh, initiative, they uh, earn, end up earning a lot of wealth, and then they decide to uh, use that wealth uh, to help other people. What uh, what we have done is that we've combined uh, these two words together, entrepreneurship and philanthropy, and came up with this name, phrase, whatever we want to call it, philanthropy. And the difference between this one and the other two is that any uh, venture, any idea that we start, and it doesn't have to be, we don't have to first become rich to start doing, uh, to be doing philanthropic work. It's even as a child, as a young person, uh, we start thinking about how can I, the idea that I have, how can I make money from it? How can I earn money from it? And then also, how can I uh, uh, help the society, help the community uh, be a better place? So, when we were talking about um, this, um, how, do we, how are we going to be service to humanity? Uh, starting from active income, that's how most of us start with. Uh, then we are, uh, our plan should be to move over to passive income and then help uh, alleviate some of the challenges that our, uh, our world has. And then also, and then at the end, leaving a legacy uh, behind because as the scripture said, again, our progress in the world of God, which are unlimited, is depending on how well we are remembered by it, those who are left behind, the prayers that are said in our name, uh, the work, the good works that are being done in our name. So that's why we came up with this concept of entrepreneurship. That's what we um, came up with. I'd like to um, add to that about um, leaving a legacy, meaning if you were an or are an entrepreneur and you have a family, you know, you really have to consider um, when you're gone and if that's the income. And so it's, it's creating your business because a lot of times entrepreneurs are it, even, um, they're in the line of self-employed, which means they may not necessarily even have employees. And that is something that you must consider if this is going to be pretty much your career and leaving this legacy to your family. And um, there was a gentleman, his name is June. I can't think of his last name. His first name is June. And he is an amazing um, entrepreneur. And he said, you have to create your business as if you're retiring from your business, meaning you have to allow your business to run without you. So before you go, you have to make sure that you put all those folks in place. And that is a good way um, that you can build the um, entre philanthropy part of it because you're bringing others in, creating interns or uh, apprentices to eventually take over your business. And, you know, a lot of times in corporate America, people are scared to share what they know because they think you're going to take their job. But the beauty of entrepreneurship, you want someone to take your job. And then that's how you can even turn your uh, business that you're actually in there working, making the money, and then turn it into passive income because you've replaced yourself. And, and you replaced yourself with, with competent, um, employees or managers or supervisors and you're building that business on. So um, definitely something um, to consider when you're an entrepreneur that you cannot be the only person as far as for longevity and um, legacy. You can't be the only person that knows the business. Yeah, 
because then you're only making money when you're at work, but you can make your money when you're on vacation. If you open yourself up and share your talents, you know, you know, you have to learn to be generous with your business. All right, very cool. So uh, let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and start on uh, our selflessness and retirement. All right, uh, see you guys in about five minutes.
Alrighty, everyone. Uh, so welcome back to the second hour of uh, today's session. Uh, Trump Reid, uh, great to have you here. Thank you so much for uh, dialing in. I know it's, uh, I believe it's 1 a.m. in India, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you so much for being here. In the first hour, uh, we talked about why is it important to be generous uh, and not to uh, throwing, by grabbing stuff or buying stuff and just throwing it into the rubbish, but actually being generous to our fellow human beings and ultimately um, to ourselves. That's why um, we put uh, selflessness and retirement together because our thought process is that um, if we sacrifice a little bit of our comfort uh, when we are young for the future, uh, then we will have a, a really nice, comfortable, uh, whether we want to call it retirement, the next stage of life, however we want to call it uh, in the time as we defined it uh, going back to our table. Now we are here in the next stage of life. Now, age 70, is there's no magic to it, uh, but some people start their financial freedom at a much younger age. Some started a little bit later. But we know that at some point of time, we will not be able to physically work um, and to support ourselves. Now, people still continue to work because that's their passion. They love what to do, uh, but not uh, it should not be a necessity uh, to support ourselves, our family. And we should also not be a burden on others either. So. Uh, why is retirement or what is retirement? Um, it's, uh, it's a time when we need to be financially worry-free. Uh, we don't want to degrade ourselves. We don't, I personally have seen uh, many people that are uh, still in an old age and are really doing work that is physically very demanding. And I, this actually happened when I came to the United States almost 40 years ago, there was this gentleman, he was probably like, uh, at least 80 years old, tall, uh, but he was still working and it didn't seem like he was enjoying, it was hard manual labor that he was doing. So I didn't quite understand it. Um, a retired time, uh, it, there should be a time when we enjoy the flexibility of what we want to do, whatever we want to do, vacation, uh, do something fun, spend time with grandchildren, uh, however we want to do it. But to do that, we also need to have a steady um, source of income. Um, so let's put this into the um, chat, this question. Uh, when do you think we should start saving for retirement? Uh, you can either unmute yourself or respond to it in the chat. What, is there a magic uh, age or time? Imani is smiling. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see what our participants. Lucretia, what do you think? Uh, I, I think you should start saving as you, you, make, you get money. So for um, um, cash and gifts or um, allowances or wages, like it, probably like maybe from grade one, like six, seven, the parents are giving you gifts, money. Yeah, you should start saving for it for your future. Okay, you're gonna come teach our program. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to, to primary school. Uh, we, we, we got it. I think you're absolutely correct, uh, especially again, because our children are being born with one of these devices straight out of their mother's uh, tummy. There is no time <laughs> to waste. It's like, okay, you got this thing, you have to stop. We have to tell them what retirement is. Um, so uh, yes, there is really what we kind of like to emphasize is not necessarily when or how much, as it says in here, but the habit and act of getting into the habit of saving for retirement, uh, just saving, not necessarily for retirement. Of course, retirement has to be something separate. It cannot be our usual saving. Somehow we need to set it aside so we cannot touch it because we have temptation. Uh, even those that do save for retirement accounts, um, we see new things, we see uh, opportunities and we want to kind of go and tap into that fund. Uh, but there should be ways of keeping that um, separate. Um, so while we are um, for retirement uh, and investing, so we're gonna get into the investing. So the difference between 
investing and saving is that when we save, let's say we save, uh, when we save in, uh, uh, in a, is that you or is that still your wife? Uh, it's me. Can I say something about saving and investment as far as I know about it? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. We would love to have you participate. Please share. Saving is something which, uh, where you do not increase your money. You just put it in a piggy bank or somewhere where it doesn't grow. Investment is something whereby you can learn about the different types of investment like stocks, debentures, mutual funds and all. And you can make money on that your investments. That also is a part. It also can be a type of passive income. So saving is a good thing, but saving kills when you do not invest it and do not make money out of money. So I think so it should be done. Yes. And it should be taught to the children from starting of their teenage only so that they understand what is difference between investment and savings. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> very, very cool. Thank, thank you so much. That, 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 is, that is great. Uh, and then, like you said, saving is when we put money, let's say, into a bank account. We might get a little bit of interest on it. Usually, the interest is fixed, or it may go up a little bit, or just go down a little bit. Uh, but and also, there is no risk to it. Uh, I think in most countries, uh, when we put money in a bank, it is fairly safe. I do believe that some countries it may not be quite safe. Uh, not that they steal it, but it just may be, or it might charge you, I believe, Japan, and if I'm not mistaken, Germany, they still have negative interest. So the banks charge you for keeping your money inside to keep them safe. I believe, I know Japan is definitely, that's the case. For many years, that has been the case. Or in the United States, uh, we can put my, our money in a savings account. But as we mentioned before, we get very little, 0.01%. So if you put $100 in a savings account at the end of the year, we'll have 101 penny. So it's really not, um, not much. But then investments, uh, um, it has risks as we will get into it. Uh, it has risk. We might lose it all. We may, or it might have a lot of gain. So we'll talk a little bit more about it. All right. Um, so we have a table in here. This is the cost of procrastination. It's just an okay. example um, because um, often people um, say that as soon as we start earning money, we should save for retirement. So we've taken two cases. Now, most of us do start earning money at age 25 or maybe even lower younger. But let's say if someone starts to um, save their money for retirement from age 35 to 65. That's kind of a general uh, working uh, years. And uh, we've taken a very modest amount, $10 a day. Now, this may not be feasible for everyone, but just use this as an example. If we take that at uh, $10 a day and we can put it somewhere, we can invest it in a place where it has 7.5% growth per year. Uh, over this uh, 30 years, from 35 to 65, the person would have saved 100, let's say $10,000 of their money uh, at 7.5%. Now, this means that we put money in there, it's invested, and we don't touch it. We don't take anything out because if you take out this uh, calculation, it does not work. So after 30 years of saving money and letting it grow at 7.5%, at age 65, the person would have $404,000 in their retirement account. And that has a, if you divide these numbers together, we get a 269, 270% uh, um, growth. Now, if we can continue to have the same uh, percentage of growth, then that means that once we retire, we can take out $30,000 per year out of our retirement account. So that's what they just did. Now, looking at this number, uh, particularly where we live, uh, Imani, Irma, and myself, we live in the southern part of the uh, state of California, very close to the border. Uh, $30,000 per year is very little. <laughs> it almost does not even cover rent for even a small place. Just, just barely that. It's, it's very little. Uh, so now let's look at uh, if we start uh, saving for retirement an additional earlier 10 years. 
So instead of starting at age 35, now we're going to start from age 25. Same amount, $10 a day, 7.5% growth per year. Now the individual would have saved 144000 out of their money. That is 32% uh, more than uh, this 109. Uh, but then the growth uh, is going to be uh, a lot more. So it would be close to a million dollars. Yeah. And then the, uh, at that same rate of return, then the person can pull uh, twice as much uh, from their retirement account. So we see if we wait 10 years, uh, the cost, uh, we will lose about half of what our potential earning could be during the retirement. And again, this is just an example, $10 a day for some people might be a lot. Uh, for some people might be very little, they may want to do more. Um, in your local currency, in Ghana, in uh, India. Uh, but if you look at it, the whole calculation works doesn't matter where we are in the world. It's just that we need to start as soon as possible. And maybe now even start younger, as Lucretia was saying, as soon as we start uh, earning any kind of money. Of course, at a young age, our children cannot necessarily understand that. But once they uh, develop the habit of saving, it's the process is the same. Ronnie, would you like to add anything? Yeah, um, I took a picture. I took a screenshot so I could show my son. You could be a millionaire son. if you save your money. Um, How old are your sons? They're, uh, they're my boys. 20, 20. 20 so. Yeah. <laughs> so start now. Oh my gosh. I actually, I, you know, I'm. I'm a, I'm a drone mom. I'm not even a helicopter mom. I'm actually connected to their bank accounts. And so I, when they get their check in there, I yeah. steal it and put it in their savings. <laughs> uh, and they're like, Hey mom, I'm like, Hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, and then I'm investing and I'll take a part of that savings. And then I'll, I'm, I'm they, I put them in CDs or something. Yeah. I just yeah. put their money away. Cause I know they won't do it. I know I'm bad, but I'm bad in a good way. Um, but I have a question. So let's say you hit 20, I mean, you hit 65 and you're ready to retire. So it's in this um, retirement account. So I'm thinking, are you able to still continue to earn interest? Like, let's say you, you would just withdraw maybe once a year, because I know then that's when you have to get the taxes out. So let's say um, I was the smart one, which I can't really say that. I can't say the 907, but let's just pretend. It makes me feel better. Um, I just pull out 100000 and deposit it into my Navy federal account or whatever. And then I kind of live off of that. Can yeah. I do that? And then I still have my 807 in the retirement account, still earning that interest. Is uh, that how it works? Yes, that, that's, that's correct. Exactly. So... Uh, th this is getting a little specific about our uh, uh, retirement accounts in here, but yes, as much uh, as long as you leave some in there, whatever is left in there will continue to grow at the rate that has been growing. And that's the smart thing to do. You don't want to take the whole thing out because obviously we don't die at 65, 65 right. or 70 or whatever um, the age we start pulling that money. Um, yes, and we need to make sure that it lasts for us because nobody knows how long we're going to live. Uh, and we need to make sure that it lasts for us as long as it can, um, especially with our uh, high cost of uh, uh, medical stuff and insurance and everything here in the U.S. Uh, yes, it, it, we definitely have to keep it going. But, but it's great that you're doing. The only thing I would say, we, we are doing the same thing with our boys too. Their bank accounts are linked to ours. So we can see it. We can see what they're doing. Thank you. So I yeah. don't feel bad. No, no. My because... son keeps saying, my, come, my son, he'll say, mom, I need you to come to the bank and sign the paper. I'm like, I'm not signing that paper <laughs> to disconnect myself. Yeah, no, it's because it, it is, uh, it, it is something that, as we've been saying, financial, uh, gaining financial intelligence does not come in a two, three, 10 hour workshop. It is the habits that is uh, developed over time. We have also seen it with our two boys. We have uh, two boys, one of them is 20 and then the other one is 21. And uh, like when we gave them credit card, it was part of, we did not give them their own credit card. It was part of our credit card. 
we would monitor how they spend money, one of them. Uh, and we told them that every month you have to, at the end of the month, you have to come and bring your receipt to match and make sure that what is in the credit card matches your receipt. One of them was very good about it. The other one took a little bit of time, like a year and a half before he got into that habit of looking right. at it. And, and it's not something that we can force. Uh, it's, it's a natural thing that happens. Um, same thing with investments and saving. Uh, if, uh, the only thing that I would say, Imani, is uh, encourage, get them involved and encourage them to develop that. If they don't do it, yes, still go ahead and take the money out of their uh, operating account, put it somewhere that they cannot touch, but try to get them involved uh, in that process. Of that. Well, that's what, what they, um, they're actually doing stocks. So, um, you know, they, it, it's, it's like you said, they have the phone and the phones make it so easy. You know, even I believe from Cash App, you can invest. I don't, I don't invest from there. I do like Ameritrade and, and then I just started the Robin Hood because of the crypto. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Getting them involved and, and making plans and, and putting it aside. So um, thank you. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's so, not so easy. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. So let's start, let's ask uh, let's ask our uh, participants if what has been your uh, interaction with your. I'm not sure if anybody has teenagers or a little older um, children. Uh, what has been your or uh, your family members? Um, have you uh, encountered any uh, um, any type of like this? Uh, parents trying to help their children learn how to save. Anybody? I know. Look, I don't think Lucretia has. Lucretia, you don't have children yet. Am I correct? No, I don't have children yet. Okay. All <laughs> but, right. Um, um, for my for my siblings and, and and I, we started saving when we were kids. So if you wanted something, you like, okay, I want to buy this bag. I want to buy this shoe. I want to buy this game. Okay, how much is it? You'd have to save for it. So we started developing the savings habits right from like childhood. So. Very good. <laughs> yep. Uh, we actually uh, had a system with, uh, uh, go ahead, Spana. No, go ahead, please. Um, okay, anybody else would like to share? Before I said what we used to do with our boys? Okay. Um, so with our boys, we had a system that anytime they wanted to buy something, I might have shared this. Uh, let's say if they wanted to buy a Lego for $20, they would have to save $40. They would put 20 of it in the bank and then purchase the Lego with 20, with the other 20, and we would match the 20 that they would put in the bank. Um, that's what um, uh, we, we used to do. Uh, and, and hopefully, and that was actually something that I even developed when I was, uh, when I was growing up, um, I had done the same thing. Every time that I wanted to buy something that was extra, like um, uh, Mill said that he uh, plays keyboard, I used to play keyboard too. So a few times that I wanted to upgrade, I would save up twice as much as what I needed and then keep one time and then purchase the other one. So. I would never deplete my saving at any time. It's like I can I can wait for this. I can wait a little longer for this. Right. Uh, okay, so let's see what is this idea of investing, what are the different elements and what we can uh, do with it and what we cannot. I'm gonna go back to um, our um, online worksheet. And uh, in here, so and this is for those who are just joining today. We use this worksheet uh, with children that when we do this in school, we give them, if you remember, we give them paper uh, play money as allowance in school. So we give them play money as allowance. They have this treasure box that teaches them the concept of uh, spending, sharing, investing, and saving. So every time we go to classroom, we present one of these lesson plans. We give them the play money as allowance. They put it in their box and they're always saving for something. So whether it's a cell phone or a camera or something. So this is how they learn. And then they record their activities in here. So let's say if today um, I got, uh, today is 526. So I got $20 in allowance. I set aside 10 for uh, life necessities. 
Um, and then I set up uh, two for sharing and three for investing. Now, I want to talk about our idea of uh, sharing and investing since we're still kind of on generosity and selfless. Our idea of sharing and investing is not limited just to monetary aspects of life. Uh, we can share and invest a lot of different uh, aspects of our life. And same thing with investing. Uh, most often, and this is how we've been able to uh, uh, teach our young ones the concept of investing. And young, I'm talking about um, children as young as age uh, eight or even seven in the schools. So our idea is that we can uh, share and invest. I'm going to go into, we do have a tab for this. It's called My Wealth and Resources. And this is going to be one of the assignments uh, for this week is that we can share and invest our knowledge, our talents and skills, our physical powers, our mental powers, our emotional powers, and also our spiritual powers. So the way this one works, especially when we do it in the classroom, um, is uh, every time we go into classroom, the students can put a little bit of money in their share and invest. And then also they can take out these are like a little boxes that they can cut out of their uh, paper, uh, their journals and say, oh, today I want to invest an hour of my talent or skill. I'm good at uh, reading or I'm good at math and I can uh, invest that into my community to be a better place. So that's where we start with investing. Uh, investing and then also there is investing our money in different aspects. Now, when we invest our knowledge, uh, when we invest most of these, there's very little risk, unless if I can uh, think of it. Uh, we're not gonna lose. By sharing and investing our knowledge, we will not lose anything. We'll actually gain some more. Um, same thing, same thing. Well, physical powers, if we lift something heavy, we might break our back or hurt our back, but that could be the only one that will have a negative effect. But when we are talking about now we're talking about investing actual money uh, into different things. Uh, so, and we put the investing under courage. The reason for that is that uh, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared to lose what we uh, invest. It's very, especially when it's money. Um, uh, investing is taking risks uh, on certain aspects of life, but with the hope of potential of high return in the long term. So investing is not for short term. Uh, investing in something in six months, uh, it may or may not work. Uh, but investing in something that's long term, it definitely is most often, it is going to be fruitful in there. Uh, so uh, we usually have an initial investment, whether it's again, the different types of, uh, of wealth, money or other things. Uh, there's going to be challenges when we invest. Uh, it's not going to be easy, um, especially when we do it through money. We can see it right now in our uh, base. Our uh, financial system here in the U.S. is going through a lot of ups and downs. Uh, we should always be mindful of not investing only in one type. Uh, and we'll talk about the types such as like uh, whether it's stocks or real estate or uh, gold um, or silver or something like that because not all of them follow this. They kind of generally follow the same thing, but there are different types that could help us not to lose everything. Uh, we need to uh, do independently investigate the truth. Uh, we have seen often that people invest based on their friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, recommendation. Oh, I think you should invest in this. Or now these days, internet and television. Now, while our friends and coworkers and family uh, do not want to deceive us, they don't uh, want to give us any bad advice, but what they did for themselves may or may not work for ourselves. So we always have to look at this investment. Is it right for me? Is it the right time for me to do this investment or not? Or not? Uh, another thing that often, unfortunately, people uh, do, and it's very bad, is they invest everything that they have and they forget about their life necessities. 
This often uh, happens to like somebody who wants to start a business or somebody who's an entrepreneur and has an idea which has a lot of risk because that idea may or may not work. But they cash out their retirement, they cash out their, uh, everything, they sell their house, they sell everything and pour it into a business, not thinking that, well, I still need to eat. I still need to have a shelter, need to have a place. <laughs> And, and if you're starting a business, I mean, based on my experience, I have been involved with several startup businesses. Uh, five years is the minimum that any business needs uh, to start producing any kind of results, any kind of income. So all of those needs to be uh, calculated in there. And the last, well, not the last one. The other one is that ethical investing. I think people have gotten into trouble for, again, not doing their own investigation, and later on finding that the money that they put in was not put in into something ethical, that wh whatever that means, it could be based on their personal uh, spiritual beliefs or their beliefs or something like that. It might be ethical for somebody, but it may not be ethical for somebody else. And then patients, uh, uh, investments always require time. We cannot be in a rush. We cannot say, all right, I want to put this in and in six months, I think it's going to uh, produce results. If it does, I sing on the cake, but we should always be ready. And there is one that, that I missed that. Um, so the, what was the risk? That we should, I think personally for me has been that every time I invest, I set my mindset that it's potentially I can lose it all, especially if it's like in stocks. Because uh, stocks are so volatile that uh, we can lose everything overnight. So just kind of keeping that uh, in mind. And then we'll get into uh, a little bit of more information on the different types of investing. Any question or any thoughts? Imani, Emma, you've been awfully quiet today. You can chime in if you like. Anything about what uh, investing really means or how do you, we haven't talked about how to get started. Everybody's quiet. I don't have much to say about investing, but okay. I had something to say about children and helping children save. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I, I, tried, I, I have tried to lure my daughter into saving more money, and I even offered to give her 25 cents to every dollar she saves. Okay. And it's still... It's still difficult to teach. So, and and when I, did, know. I, I know your daughter is an adult now. When when did you start, uh, or when did you start trying to teach her how to say? Well, she's twenty four, and I I think I started. Well, she went away to school when she was seventeen, but she just she came back maybe two three years ago, mm -hmm. and. It, I've been trying ever since she went to school, but I wasn't saving adequately when she was younger, so I didn't teach her by example. Okay. Well, and, and that's what we are hoping to make that change is that more and more parents, I think, as we are working with uh, different people, and it, it's something that has not been taught, uh, and I think it's a big challenge all over the world. It's, uh, some people may think that it's a challenge only in their country. That's the uh, uh, kind of a response I get every time somebody contacts us. So we have this uh, unique problem in Ghana or in Cameroon or in India or Pakistan that people are not saving. They don't know how to save. And my immediate response is that it's a global challenge. Uh, people all around the world, it's, it just has not been uh, enough emphasis has not been put on this aspects of life uh, and maybe it wasn't needed in the past but now more and more again because we are being exposed <coughs> sorry we are being exposed to material stuff from the very beginning it's more and more important for us to teach our children or maybe our grandchildren our hope is that the children that we are teaching now they would be the parents that will teach their own children in the future that's what we really hope um, that it will happen. 
Uh, all right, so let's get into the different uh, vehicles of investment. We talked a little bit uh, uh, about this general in there. Um, so again, we do not start, our idea of investing does not start with stocks and bonds. It actually starts with education. We've been talking about it, whether it's academic or financial. Um, I should actually move some of these other ones up. I'm going to do that in the new version of the book. So we're all uh, investing right now. What's that? We're all investing right now. Exactly. Okay. Uh, time that we're investing in learning together. Uh, and I hope uh, all our participants know that it's not only you who you're benefiting from this uh, program. We always gain something new. That's what we love. Yes. Uh, this program. Uh, we invest in our family and children. Uh, this is something that unfortunately our young couples don't necessarily understand that uh, when we become a couple, uh, part of the reason should be, again, if you go back to the sacred writings, uh, part of uh, the reason for people to get married is to have children and to have children that will continue to mention the name of God uh, going forward. Uh, but they don't think about it. And any uh, small obstacle, it's like, uh, oh, well, let's call it quick. Uh, we don't need to be married. We don't need to be a big unit. Or in a, uh, even in a business partnership, many business partnerships fall apart because uh, the partners did not pay, uh, set up enough time to know each other and to work toward the challenges to make the venture successful. Um, and, and then the community, our communities need a lot of investment. There are so many challenges in our community. Uh, and then we get into where uh, we're going to for good education, uh, our stocks and bonds. Uh, so this is where these are going to be limited to monetary aspects of life. Um, stocks and bonds. Uh, let's uh, ask our participants. Uh, who can tell us about stocks? Anybody uh, from the participants? Can, what do you know about stocks? How do they work? Stocks are basically um, instrument. Um, in the they are on, uh, in India, we have stocks on BSE and NSCs and other countries, they'll be listed on other stock exchanges whereby companies registered on the exchange and we can buy shares from them for longer tenure, for shorting purpose and all. So stock has always carried a big risk, but also you can um, invest your money and make faster money in that. It comes with the risk, always. Yep, yep, exactly, great. And, and what about bonds? Do you know what bonds are? I don't know if they have. Bonds basically uh, issued by the government from a country's government and it has a fixed rate of interest kind of thing. So it is safer instrument than the stocks to make money. Yeah, exactly. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfect, those are perfect explanations. Mm -hmm. uh, stocks are usually private companies, uh, not private companies, but they are uh, uh, public companies that uh, list their shares uh, whenever they want to raise money. They uh, list their shares on the uh, exchange. Some of them are within the country. Some of them are international. And then bonds are when uh, governments need to borrow money um, to do different things, to build roads, uh, any kind of improvements uh, in the society. That's, that's what they do. Um, so that is a um, clear idea. Uh, mutual funds, I don't know if this is a terminology just for us in the US. Can somebody share if, whether in- uh, Mutual funds are also in India. Basically what mutual funds does is, if me as a person, I don't know what stocks are, if I am not able to study the things, I'm not the experts. So mutual funds, what they do is, they will take money from you and they will invest in companies on your behalf. So we, here we have two kinds of mutual funds, active and passive. Active means the fund manager is there on your behalf to uh, invest the money in different, different companies. And passive are, they will invest at the uh, kind of index kind of thing. They'll invest in top 50 companies only. They don't have to do much about, but then inactive, they will keep on searching on the which our companies are good as per the company's uh, ROE and everything. They keep on changing the companies and investment on behalf of us and by charging this thing charges. 
Okay. Professional charges okay. and all. Yeah. All right. Very good. Perfect. So it's it's the same as what we have exactly same as what we have in here. Uh, Lucretia, what about Ghana? Uh, what exists in Ghana as far as stocks, bonds, or mutual funds? Hello, I'm sorry, Alex, can you hear me again? Yes, yeah, uh, uh, yep, I can hear you. So, so, the, so the question is, uh, what, uh, what financial systems are available in Ghana as far as like stocks, mutual funds, or bonds? Um, so yeah, uh, in Ghana, the stocks like this, we have stock, um, the stock, Ghana Stock Exchange, whereby companies list their stocks, and then you can go and see a licensed stock broker to purchase the stocks as well. And then for the bonds, we have um, treasure bills, and I think some other bonds as well. So yeah, and then mutual funds as well. I don't know if you question, but yeah. Right. We have like, right. that do the banks. Okay, all right, well. Uh, perfect. I guess uh, our financial systems has become <laughs> uh, global. Uh, mm -hmm. So those were perfect examples. Uh, yeah, uh, mutual funds. It's like uh, if we don't have time to research them ourselves, uh, that is when we have someone do the work for us. Of course, they do uh, charge a fee. That that that's what they do. Uh, now, it's certain uh, a certain element that has been changing, and I'm not sure. I think it does exist in India. Um, is the way we purchase these stocks and bonds. Uh, in the past, I remember like up to 10 years ago, before these apps became very, uh, applications on the phones became very popular. If let's say, if I wanted to buy stocks, I would have to set up a brokerage account, uh, not at a bank, it would be a different entity, different type mm -hmm. of financial institution. I uh, have certain amounts of money in there. I couldn't put like $100 in there and start buying it selling stocks. I would have to have a little bit more. I think it used to be like $5,000. Um, then I would have to buy like a whole stock. So let's say, for example, if the company stock was $1,000, I would have to have that 1000 to purchase it. But now, because of technology and a lot of the new apps that we have, Imani was mentioning, there's like Robinhood. Uh, there is, what else is here, um, Imani? Ameritrade. Well, no, Ameritrade is the is the traditional one, the new one. Oh, uh, okay. Like, um, uh, there's a new that crypto, um, something crypto. Yeah. It, which, which which now we can actually buy a portion of that thousand uh, dollar stock. We don't have to have a thousand dollar to buy the whole. I can say, oh, I only want to buy a hundred dollars worth of this stock. That's uh, in whole is a thousand dollars. So, and and some of the older companies are also now following the same thing. They're allowing people to do that, which is more tangible for our young ones. So if there are young people that don't have enough money and they don't want to buy one stock for $1,000, they can start to invest a smaller share of their money. Uh, how, is, is this also available in uh, India? No, in, in India, still we have to buy at least one stock of oh, a okay. company. Uh, Okay. Still, that right. facility is not available. Yes. Okay. Pieces we can't. okay. Well, I'm sure it will become available because everything is becoming global. I, I think so. Yeah. 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 But but then we have to invest like that. We have to still go with the mutual funds only. So mm -hmm. this minimum of 500 we can start with in mutual mm -hmm. funds. Maybe. But stock we have to have purchase one stock okay. because here we have cheaper stocks, cheaper stocks as well to purchase. If someone wants to, can go ahead with the. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of learning if the person wants to start learning can go with the cheaper stocks okay. can right. start their uh, the pin stock journey with that right. okay. like we call the penny stocks yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah not exactly penny stocks also there are many good companies they do uh, stock splitting and all so the prices of stocks comes down i think uh, the uh, stock split here means if a uh, Stock cost rupees 10,000, they will uh, split it into five parts. One is to five. Mm -hmm. So the first stock comes to 2,000 rupees, like that. Mm -hmm. yep. Got it. Thank you. And, yeah. And then we have the same thing here, know. too. Yeah, we do have uh, stocks that are very inexpensive, or like the ones that you're sharing that they will split up and they become less expensive. But then they grow. The hope is that they will grow uh, to be uh, larger again. So. Uh, but but this new system that we have that allows to uh, individuals to purchase 
uh, parts of um, stock, portion of stock, is they're really popular among the young people. Um, that is, I know our boys are doing some of that and we've been helping them. It's not that, all right, so just go and do, because they do need some guidance still from mm -hmm. the parents or somebody who, my wife does uh, buy and sell stock. That is, uh, it's not her job, it's her main hobby. So she is uh, on a daily basis, she's watching the stocks. Um, that's what she does. So she's been helping the boys uh, kind of learn, pick some stocks that are not too risky, or make sure that they do um, pick something and they keep it for a long time. So going back to uh, the retirement, the investment for retirement, whatever we buy, we should keep it for a long term. Uh, we can set up some uh, investing for like play money, as we would call it. Um, so we can buy and sell. And if you lose it all, it's okay. It's, it's not that, that much. But then we should also have money uh, that is going to grow to make sure that once we get to our retirement age, uh, there is enough money uh, left in there. Um, let's see. Then uh, the last one that we can talk about is the real estate. Um, that is how uh, I personally uh, like real estate uh, much, but I used to do stock trading, but not anymore. Um, but real estate is something that I've always uh, favored uh, because it's a no matter what you do, there is a tangible thing that you purchase. Uh, with stocks, I often feel like, uh, not that they're not tangible, but we could lose it all overnight. Uh, and yep. that happened to us in 2008. We did lose quite a bit of money in stocks in 2008 where the whole uh, world economy crashed. Uh, and that affected real estate too. A lot of people lost their real estate, uh, but at least there is a building there. There is something. Right. So, We've been uh, really happy with our uh, real estate investments. But then real estate needs a larger startup um, in, uh, initial investment, uh, which uh, individuals may not be able to do it on their own. They may need to get together with family members or friends to come up with the initial uh, money, depending on how uh, purchased um, here in the United States, uh, the per the um, if you are purchasing a uh, property that we're going to live in there, we can start with a very low uh, down payment, maybe like 3%, 3 to 5% if you're going to live in there. But mm -hmm. if we are buying as an investment, then we need 30% uh, down payment. Um, so there's a, a big difference. All right, uh, let's see. Am I would like to have anything for this stuff? Mm. I miss anything? No, I feel pretty good. Okay. Learning a lot. I'm learning a lot from everyone. Yep, it's, it's always good. That's why I love uh, doing this stuff. All right. Uh, let me see if there's anything else we need to cover for today. Um, I, I think the, the only uh, thing that I would like to add, let's go back to our table in here. So when we set goals, if you guys remember, uh, we set our goals. Uh, let me actually go back to this one. So in our patient's uh, lesson plan, we began to set some goals of what we want to accomplish in life. Um, and one of the elements, so we said, all right, so uh, something uh, simple. So I want to buy an iPhone for $1,000. I'm going to save for it for one year. If I'm a child or a teenager, I'm going to do more chores, play less video games. Um, so this sacrifice, this is something that it's not easy for people to get into the habit, to give up something. And that's why we have the, uh, we have the uh, retirement as part of the selflessness, the sacrificing something, giving up something. Uh, what do you think, uh, let's say in young ages or any age, or even your age, what do you think you're willing to give up uh, to make sure that you have a uh, safe and secure um, retirement. Let's see if anybody has any idea. Again, the question is, what can you think of that you can give up right now, not have, to make sure that your retirement is set? Um, I think I can give up um, 
out and like going out a lot to restaurants, to recreational centers, having fun, too much fun. Yes. <laughs> you know, okay. All right. That cut it and use that money to invest mm -hmm. for my future. But, but Lucretia, I know you're young. Uh, you're, I believe you're 24, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but isn't it time for you to have fun? I mean, what if we don't get to, there are people that say, well, what if I don't get to retirement age or something like that? Uh, isn't it your time to have fun? I mean, wouldn't you be missing out? while you're waiting for her to come back. Anybody else would like to share? Something that's one thing that you're willing to give up right now um, to make sure you have your, Irma says, I'm going to have, oh, Irma, sorry, uh, Imani, what are you giving up? Um, well, I, I put into my retirement first, which I didn't always, and then I couldn't keep up. And, you know, I started mutual fund program and then, you know, so just being committed with um, with paying pay myself first in the sense I pay my savings and my investments first before anything, and I rather be short on something else than on my savings and my investment, which is not always the case, and um, and that's the importance of really putting it in, like like with our children, even in ourselves, because it's really hard to pull back. Once you're already out there spending that money, it's really hard to pull back. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, Lucretia's honesty. It's like, yeah, I got to give up a little fun. But, you know, it's, it's nice to not always go to every single party, every single event, have a little mystery to your life. <laughs> the fact that it's pretty much the same, you really don't miss much. And everyone has these phones and cameras. You're not missing much anyway. You'd appreciate all that money in your bank. And when you're 65 years old, you're not living off of a small little social security and, you know, having to move in with your kids or, you know, so just I always think of think of where set that goal of what you want and look at the sacrifice that you're going to that sacrifice is, is going to to pay off in the future and so just focus on that that you know that one day I won't be working every single day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I think I shared my experience and I like to do it again because I'm so proud of it like our family uh, so if you remember, uh, 10 years ago, uh, actually, go well, back 17 years ago, I was involved with a friend who is an entrepreneur. I'm still uh, involved with him. He had an idea um, in the technology. I was involved with him. We worked on the company for seven years, and uh, it was very successful. We ended up selling the company in 2011. And uh, at that point, we decided to invest all the money that we received from the proceeds of that company into real estate. Now, some of our friends have said, well, congratulations, you were successful, you sold the company, now you can sell your house and come buy a bigger one. And this is a true story, I'm not kidding. Um, Imani knows somebody from Carmel Valley told us that you should can sell your house and come live in Carmel Valley. My first thing was that, well, I didn't know we need a visa or your approval to come to live there. It's a, it's a, different, exactly. part of, it's a different part of, uh, but we decided not to change our lifestyle at all. Uh, we did not buy anything new. Uh, we still live in the same house after 10 years now since we sold that company. But we are so proud of having that discipline of not spending any of that proceeds uh, and putting everything into real estate because that happened in 2011. Uh, uh, five years later, our family became financially independent. Uh, of course, we were definitely in the right time. Uh, I mean, 2011 was after the crash of the real estate crash that happened throughout the world. So we probably were able to purchase properties at a really good price, which we haven't been able to do anymore. But, and then we've tried to live an example, at least to our children. We always tell our children, it's like, look, when we sold the company, we did not change our lifestyle. We still live in the same house because it was important for us to create that freedom for two reasons. One, for our future years, but then also uh, to that we started Mind Treasure in 2006. I really wanted to 
spend um, our time, at least my time, working on this program, Mind Treasures. And that's how we've been able to provide this education at no cost to everyone. Um, so that was our um, sacrifice. Um, and and now, now we can get to enjoy. Now, after several years after that happened, then maybe we operated our car. We still live in the same house. Our number one luxury is travel. So that is uh, what we um, reward ourselves with. So I just wanted to share that. All right. So and I before just want to say, Alex, I love your story. And, and I want to say it's never too late. And I think in this time, we have to learn to be creative. And sometimes we might have to go outside of our immediate family, maybe bringing in our, our family, even bringing in, um, you know, maybe grandparents, cousins or whatever, and making a commitment because um, in, you have to invest. You have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your future. And if you don't know, it, and not only about getting older and not working your job, you can get hurt. You know, I learned the hard way. Um, I was making great money as a cosmetologist and I got sick and I, and, and I didn't build the business to train someone where I'm sitting at home making money. I was the only one. So immediately my income went from wow to whoa, you know? So um, I just feel in this time, figure out what you want to do and you might have to go beyond the the traditional way of of getting something you're going to have to possibly pull together with maybe other family members trustworthy friends and make investments especially you know property um some people use property go the opposite of alex and buy a property and allow it to gain a lot of equity and then sell it and then buy something else and live there, you know, and a lot of people can't just do that, but um, it's a sacrifice either way, but it pays off in the long run. And, and I would, I would, and that's definitely one of my, my, my goals is to get into real estate just even for myself, because the rent's going to keep going up, but I much prefer the equity to go up. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. All right. Very cool. So, uh, for next week, uh, which is our final session of this series. Ooh, talent uh, show. Yeah, uh, we normally have a talent show in, in the, the classroom, which is very fun to watch uh, our students perform their talents. Um, so if you have a talent, uh, uh, you can record it and post it in the group chat and, and WhatsApp. Uh, we won't have time to, well, maybe we won't have time. Since we maybe. Have only, yeah, since we usually have only a <coughs> few friends. But... Uh, Sometimes the internet, their internet is not strong enough to perform their talent live. So if you like, um, you can uh, record your talent. Uh, it can be anything, um, singing, dancing, arts, uh, music, whatever that is, uh, you can record it. Uh, or if it's like pictures or something, you can post it in the group chat. We always love to see friends' talents. And then the assignment is to uh, work on the, uh, the few activities that are in the creativity. Uh, listing out your talents. Uh, first and foremost, we are going to look at and see how we can use our talents uh, to help others and enhance our community. And then um, how can we take a talent, an idea, and make it into a business uh, and make it uh, profitable in there? That's, um, so that's the assignment for that. Um, oh, for investing in courage, uh, there is a tab, uh, it's, it's courage tab. If you like, that's something that you can start. If you've never done stocks before, this is what we do in class. Uh, we have the participants identify stocks from different companies. Um, so for example, uh, iPhone, uh, the manufacturer is Apple. Um, and then uh, you can go to this site. This is one of the sites that you can look up uh, stock uh, prices. I'm just gonna do that quickly. Um, so if you come here and I look for Apple, it will tell me, of course, you may see different, uh, like for Apple, it's giving a bunch of different stuff, but it's mm -hmm. usually the, the first one. So AAPL, that is the, because every stock is known by uh, a stock ticker. AAPL. 
I'm going to go back in here. So I'm going to look at the price today. So if I were to buy a uh, one share of Apple today, it's let's say $144. Uh, so I'm going to put in here week one, $144. So that's if I were to purchase it today. Uh, then on this chart, I can look and see how much uh, Apple was like five years ago to see if it has grown or if it has gone down. So if I go to five years ago, uh, the price was $38. So it seems like it was a good investment. If somebody mm -hmm. gets $38. Uh, and then you can uh, monitor it on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. So this is something that uh, we have even, uh, we start this from like grade six or so, the students that do this, and they really like it. It's something that we, we can keep track of your local stocks just before you start buying any, any kind of stock. It's a great way of looking um, to see what's good out there. And this is under courage. Um, that's what it is. All right, we are at the end of our time. Any questions before we end today's session? And again, thank you so much for everyone uh, that is uh, participating that's here, especially our, our two friends from India. I know it's 2 a.m. there. Really, I cannot appreciate your sacrifice. I mean, this is what we see that uh, friends from uh, outside of U.S., I'm just going to put it straight, outside of U.S., they're willing to sacrifice their sleep, their late time to participate in our program. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, if there are no questions, uh, we shall see you next week, same time for our last uh, session in the series. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.